Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Sovereign God, we stand in awe of your presence. 
your infinite love and wisdom, your power and might. We praise you and lift your name on high. We hunger and thirst after righteousness, knowing that we will be filled. May your Holy Spirit fall upon us afresh this night. May this hallowed hour of worship and praise be a lovely fragrance to your nostrils and a nourishment to our souls. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Nisi, our protector. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Elohim, above all other gods. You are worthy to be praised and reign supreme over us. With such a mighty fortress, and with the heavenly host encamped around, we know that the evil one cannot prevail. We can loudly sing in total agreement like the songwriter, Jesus is stronger than Satan and sin. Satan to Jesus must bow. We give the thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit which intercedes with our spirit, even in our groanings, reassuring us that we are children of God and heirs of your heavenly kingdom. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, that your ways are not our ways, neither are your thoughts our thoughts. Still, you hear our prayers and know the desires of our hearts. You are close to the brokenhearted. We thank you for your powerful daily presence in our lives and that we can be assured that no matter what we are facing, your heart is towards us and your ears are open to our prayers. It is because of your awesome power and might that we are confronted before our own frailties and acknowledge our total dependence upon you. We seek your forgiveness for the times we fail to represent you in our homes, communities, church and workplaces, for the times we spread falsehood, for the times we did not lend a helping hand or minister to someone in need. Forgive us. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us from our sin. Reclothe us in your righteousness and make us worthy of your blessings and to be called the children of God. We pray for our governments and world leaders that you will guide and lead them as they try to determine how best to govern and navigate this country during these perilous and uncertain times. May their leadership and decision making be formed with mercy, justice, compassion, wisdom and genuine love. Let this be a time of caring and sharing, a time of faith, not of fear. Lands and borders have not divided us, indicating that you are indeed the one who reigns supreme and over this vast universe. We lift our church leaders before you, O Lord God, our bishop, ministers, lay preachers, and those who serve in different capacities in our churches. Grant unto them the vision to lead your people aright, as they grapple with the many issues confronting them from day to day. We pray for our families, schools, and young people. Protect and guide families and those who offer their services to the school. We pray for our children trying to adjust with all the challenges this pandemic brings. May those who seek the assistance of government agencies and charities and those concerned in education find the resources to assist children in in obtaining the necessary devices and equipment needed for a satisfactory, conducive teaching and learning to take place in this new e-learning environment. We thank you for the final successful resolution of the CXC examinations. May those children now moving on to institutions of higher learning in pursuit of their goals and dreams for the future be blessed with much courage, patience, tolerance, wise and obedient hearts. Teach them how to increase their self-control and how to decrease impulsive behaviors and preserve peace. May they be blessed with the best teachers and the best situations for learning, with wise mentors and counselors to steer them in the right direction. Open windows of opportunity for them to meet Christian young men and women who sincerely love you and live for you so that their lives will be spiritually enriched. And as they celebrate their accomplishments, may they do so in a way that is uplifting, motivating, and godly, bringing glory and honor to your name. God of compassion, we pray for all conditions of men. 
Grant us grace and discerning minds and spirits to understand others' problems and anxieties. Bring comfort to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. Lord, in their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Help us to bring your presence to the lives of those who need, who need to know of your love and eternal salvation. We pray a fresh anointing on the one who will bring this meditation this evening. Guard his heart and mind as he speaks and keep him focused on thee. May his words go forth with power and, and passion. And may we, the listeners, receive the message with much joy and thanksgiving intent to do thy will and now lord god maker of heaven and earth in these times of isolation apart from loved ones distant from friends away from neighbors we thank you that there is nothing that separates us from you we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name we commend ourselves and all of whom we've prayed to your loving mercy and protection Hear and accept our prayers, we humbly beseech thee, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and soon coming King. Amen and Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our daily devotions. 
And today, we reflect on the passage of Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through to 38. And it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And this shall be our guide for today, as we examine our world, understand our role in change, and empower others as we wrestle with the theme, being a part of God's revolution. And the first thing we must realize as we are a part of God's revolution is that we must be engaged. Verse 38a says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful. Earlier on in this passage, and in the prior passages, Jesus is engaged in healing and imparting wisdom to the masters of Israel. Healing mute, blind, and paralyzed persons, and even raising persons from the dead. Jesus was actively remembering his society. And once again, we see that Jesus is on a mission to bring wholeness to the Jews, as he teaches and cures persons of disease and sickness. The passage tells us that as he is ministering to persons, that he is moved with compassion, that he fell for them in their situation, because he sensed that they were restless and felt neglected by their leaders, who were supposed to be at their aid, helping them negotiate the course of life and its challenges. And the passage makes the note that the crowd were like sheep without a shepherd, and in so doing brings Jesus into the limelight as the true shepherd who cares for the sheep. And throughout much of Matthew, we see Jesus being the true shepherd, as he would interact, feed, heal, pass on wisdom, and deliver persons from all their difficulties, but most of all, to get to know them. And so, when Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, meaning that the presence of persons of need is great, it shows to us that Jesus was engaged in his community and in the lives of those who are being affected. And being engaged is what aided Jesus in being effective, and why persons would have given him the authority to transform their lives, because they knew he cared and wanted to change their situation. Engaged in his heart, and so he engaged their lives and transformed it. And so it is a call for us in our daily life to be engaged in the happening in the lives of people in our community and in our nations so that we can be moved into action. The entire world has faced challenges with what has befallen us, even in our backyards. From individuals being out of jobs or working reduced hours from four to five months, or schools and students in the dilemma of finding resources for online learning, the closing of many businesses, the rising crime rate, the so much fallout in other areas. And so as we see all of these situations around in our community, the question is, how does this information impact us? Has these news just serve to be a topic of conversation or an intriguing read or listen? Or has it compelled us to become more engaged and aware of the dire situations that may be affecting our neighbors so that we can seek to find ways, perhaps through our home congregations, perhaps through NGOs, or perhaps through our own individual way to pass on the aid and living necessities to persons who I need. Brothers and sisters, the beginning of a revolution is to become aware of the difficulties that are being faced and engaging intentionally to uplift people's lives. And as the African proverb reminds us, I am because we are. Secondly, 
to be a part of God's revolution means that we have to be immovable. Verse 38b says, But the laborers are few. The author of the gospel makes the point that the mass of Israel was like sheep without a shepherd, in need and weary of life. It brings into light the work ethic of the traditional leaders of the community. It begs the question, what were they doing? What could be more important than caring for the lives of their fellow countrymen, which was their call and mission? But throughout scripture, it is apparent that the Pharisees and appointed leaders found themselves separating themselves from common folk in an attempt to preserve their own sense of self-righteousness, which alienated a great portion of the community. And so, the laborers down tools. Other persons, such as the scribe in Matthew 8 and the rich young ruler in chapter 19, wanted to be a part of the labor force for Jesus, but found it hard to submit themselves fully to the call of service. And perhaps faced with a mountain of care to be given in that particular time and in the future, Jesus speaks to his disciples and highlighting the reality of that moment, that the harvest is plenty and the labor force is few, implying to them that they who are currently employed in God's revolution have a lot of work to do in the early stages of the movement. And so, passing on the notion that in their pursuit of bringing love to their community, the workload is going to be great. So they have to become immovable in their service to bring change and healing. They are the first wave in the shift. And so they have to understand that they are going to have to buckle down and struggle through that period to get the ball rolling. And so too with us, we who are laborers in God's vineyard, we must be hands on deck, few in number though at moments, but we need to be immovable in our resolve and endeavor to get the waves in motion for our revolution. You may be the sole income earner in your family now, And the pressure may be overwhelming to keep your household afloat. I encourage you to rely on God for his strength and be immovable in your resolve to provide for your family. It may be just you and a few colleagues at your job keeping the work tipping over. And you may be ready to say that you've had it. I urge you to call on God for his peace and be immovable in your call to your vocation. You may look at your home church and feel that your efforts or the missions that are being partaken are not making any headway. I want to encourage you to ask God for his sustaining power and be immovable in your faithfulness to his call. The task may be plenty and the laborers may be few, but I want to encourage us to call on God for his strength to overcome all hurdles to keep his revolution going. And lastly, in God's revolution, we have to be empowering. Verse 38c says, Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Even though there is a presence of an imbalance, that there is more people in need than workers to spread care, The reality that the disciples will be faced with the initial task of a heavy workload, Jesus passes on a lifeline and a silver lining in this scenario, that all is not lost, that God is still in control of all situations, and that in furthering God's work and establishing the continuity of the revolution, that the disciples should pray to God to quicken the hearts of individuals to come and to share in the service of God. It highlights to the disciples that there are acts that only God can do. And it is in their best interest to focus on what they can control and their role in this partnership. That while some would sow and others would water, that it is God who gives the strength and multiply the laborers and the yield. However, 
While it is God who sends out the laborers, it is the disciples' role through the grace of God to journey and empower newfound workers. The disciples would have to pass on the mysteries and the experiences of the faith to help in the formation of the new laborers. They would have to pass on the tricks and the rules of the trade so that the new laborers can be effective and engaged in working for God's people. They would have to instill in them the need to ensure that the workforce is positioned to be dynamic and relevant to those of that age. And so too with us. It is our role to empower persons in their life and in the work for God. We can empower our children and young persons by teaching them values and skills that will aid them in their life. Whether it is the benefits of saving, of emotional intelligence, or how to market themselves in the world of work. We can empower adults and perhaps your experience of marriage or raising a child or running a home within a spiritual sense. We can empower persons by journeying with them through their Christian walk to help them in their understanding and practice of prayer and studying of the word. And just as importantly, we empower them by intentionally incorporating them in the offices and roles of the church. Whether we can teach them how to run audiovisual systems or teach them and nurture them in what it means to be a class leader or teach them and nurture them into how to participate in sharing God's spoken word. Brothers and sisters, we have to be intentional about shaping the lives of persons around us and empowering them so that our future, so that the future of not just our communities and our nations are kept, but the healthy growth and the succession of our church is achieved through God's might and grace. And so in conclusion, as we endeavor to be a part of God's revolution, I would like to remind us that we have to be engaged with the happenings of our communities and seek to bring change. We have to rely on God's power and strength and remain immovable in our responsibilities and duties. And we have to empower persons to be active participants in the work and the witness of God and God's church. Amen.
Jesus has a deep hunger for the lost. He doesn't really feel sorry for the crowds, but has a deep compassion in his heart for them. It is not just only an emotion, but a visceral reality. His love is real and moves him to act and call others to act. Jesus longs for them to come home to the Father, but more than longing, he's gone looking to bring them back. His call to his disciples and to us is to join him in his work of love, compassion, and care. Like Jesus, our prayer should not only be to work in the harvest, but also to pray for more harvesters. O God, our Savior, the Holy One who wants none of his human children to be lost, give us hearts to care and hands to serve those who have lost their way. At the same time, Father, we pray, that you will pour out your Holy Spirit on your church worldwide and in our own congregations to stir us to work at reaching the lost. Near and far, we want to bring your lost children back to your table of grace, love and joy in Jesus' name. And now may the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. And the people of God say, Amen. of our daily devotion we trust it has been a blessing to you now together let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly